Welcome. Today we're going to learn how to design a bookmark using a program called Tinkercad. So in the tutorial, we'll learn how to create the basic shape for the bookmark, how to add a hole for your tassel. We'll also figure out how to add text such as your name or maybe the name of someone you want to give the bookmark to, or maybe you have a favorite word or a slogan that you want to add to that bookmark. And we'll also learn how to put a few basic shapes on there. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is open up a web browser. Once you have your browser open, you want to go to the address bar at the very top and type in www.tinkercad.com. So T-I-N-K-E-R-C-A-D.com. Click enter and that will take you to Tinkercad's homepage. Here you'll have the option to log in if you already have a Tinkercad account, sign up if you need to create one, or if you scroll down a little, you'll see the option to join class if you're using this as part of a class, and here you'll enter the code that your teacher will give you. So I'm going to go ahead and get logged in. And here you'll see your design gallery if you've ever created anything in Tinkercad before. If you haven't, this will be blank, but you will have the create button here. So click that button and then choose 3D design. This will take you to a brand new work plane. But before you get started designing here, go up to the top left corner and you'll see a name that Tinkercad has assigned your project. It will be something crazy that you won't recognize. So you want to click on that and change that to make it something that you will. So this will help you find your project later. So make sure you give it a name that's easily recognizable there. So I named mine Betsy's bookmark and now you're ready to begin. If you come to the right side, you'll see the shapes that you can use in your project. We're going to start here by using this red box. So click the red box and then click anywhere in the background here. It's going to help if you put it close to the far edge because the bookmark is going to get fairly long this direction. So now you have it there. You'll see white and black squares that appear all around it. If you click on one of the white squares in the corner, you'll see the dimensions that that box currently is. So right now it's 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. The default dimensions in Tinkercad are all millimeters. Notice it does have two decimal places after that. I'm going to click on this 20 and then I'm going to type in 175. I don't have to type the decimal places in, just 175. Enter, it'll automatically add those decimals and I can see that it's now 175 millimeters long. Now, if your bookmark goes off of the work plane, you can just click and drag to get it back on there. Another useful tool, if anything goes wrong, you mess something up, something happened you didn't mean for, then click here. This little back arrow button is the undo button and you can click it multiple times. So you can click it six or seven or however many times to get back to whatever stage of your project that was right and then you can um, continue working from there. So I see that it's 175 millimeters. If I go back to that corner square and click again, I wanna change this dimension, the width, and make it 50 millimeters. So I'll type in 50, click enter, and now the bookmark is the right shape. But if I view it from the side, so to view something from a different angle, hold down the right mouse button, and scroll, or you can use the die up here and move it around and see it from a different angle that way. But you can see a big problem. If I tried to use this in a book, I wouldn't be able to close the book. So I've got to make it thinner. So to do that, if I click on this square, the white square that's in the center, I can see right now it's 20 millimeters thick. I want it to be one. So I'm going to click on that 20 and type in one and make it one millimeter thick. So now I have the shape of the bookmark. If you want, you can drag it to the center of the work plane just so it looks good again. 
And now you're ready to create that hole for the tassel at the top. So I'm going to come back over to the shapes. This time I'm going to select this gray striped cylinder. Those gray stripes indicate that something is a hole. So I'm going to click that and I want to click over here on the side. Anywhere on the work plane is fine, but be sure not to put it on top of the bookmark. If you put it on top of the bookmark, the hole won't go all the way through the bookmark because it'll just be sitting on top and you won't actually get a hole. Now this is too big for that tassel, so I'm going to click on one of those corner squares and I'm going to change the size here and make it six millimeters. So I changed both sides to six millimeters so that it would stay nice and round. Now I need to get that in the middle of the bookmark. So I want it to be perfect. I don't want to just like drag it over there. So I'm going to use the align tool. So I'm going to click somewhere in the background and drag this red rectangle around both shapes. As long as any part of the shape is inside it, it's fine. It'll include it. And what that does is select both shapes at the same time. So I can see now I have shapes selected two. Now I'm going to use the align tool, which is this rectangle and the square lined up on a line. Click on that. And that's going to make these little circles appear all around my shapes. I want to align this according to the bookmark. That means I want the bookmark to be still. So I'm going to click on the bookmark. And now I'm going to click on this center circle all the way at the bottom. And that is going to move that to the center. Now I'm also going to top align it. I'm not going to leave it there, but I'm going to, to start with it there. So I'm going to click on that top circle as well. So now I have it center and top aligned. Now to get out of this align tool, I just want to click anywhere on the background. Now I'm going to select that cylinder hole. And then I'm going to click the down arrow on the keyboard. So look on your keyboard, find the down arrow key and click that five times. One, two, three, four, five. What that does is move it down five millimeters. So each time you click moves it one millimeter. Now I want to group these two together so that I actually cut that hole out. So I'm going to click on the background, drag a rectangle around both objects so that they're both selected. Now I'm going to click on the group button. The group button looks like a square and a circle joined together. So when I click that, notice the hole is now cut and there's an actual hole in that bookmark. So now I've completed the basic shape. I'm ready to add my own custom decorations. So everything I want to add now, I want it to be on top of the bookmark. So the first thing I want to do is click on this tool here. This is the work plane tool. It looks like a grid. And then I'm going to place that on top of the bookmark. So just click anywhere on top of the red bookmark. And now I can see a yellow work plane. That means everything I add will go on top of that yellow work plane. So if I view it from the side, you can see instead of going all the way to the bottom, it's going to go on top of that yellow work plane. So the first thing I want to add is some text. So I'm going to click here on the red text option and add that on top of the bookmark. Now I don't want red text on a red background. It's difficult to see. So I'm going to just for now click on this circle that's red and I'm going to choose any color besides red. So I'll choose blue. I will probably change these colors later, but this makes it easier to work with for now. Now I'm going to change the text to be whatever I want it to say. So I'm going to be a name or some other word that you would like to put on a bookmark. The font. Now you can choose, there are four different fonts here to choose from. You can play around and see which one you like the best. I'm going to go with the first one. And now I need to rotate the text because right now it's going the wrong way. 
So if you see this curved arrow, when you hover over it, it turns red and a blue circle appears. I'm going to click on that curve arrow, hold it down and rotate around. Make sure you stay on the inside of that blue circle until you get to 90 degrees and that will make it the right direction. Now I might want to resize the text if it's too big or too small. Click on one of those corner squares and then you can resize the text by just clicking and dragging. Now I also want to change the height of the text because if I look at it from the side here, you can see that again, there's no way I could close a book with that text on there. So I'm going to click on this square that shows me the height and change that to one millimeter. Now next, I can add some shapes. So if I go back over here, I want to be sure and choose a shape that has two flat edges. So a box, a cylinder, a polygon, a heart, a star, a tube. Okay, whichever shape you want, but just make sure it has two flat edges. Otherwise it won't connect well to the bookmark or will make it impossible to close your book. So I'm going to choose the star and then just add that to the work plane. Now I want to resize the star. Now, if I just start dragging, I'm probably going to wind up with my star being too skinny or too fat. Click the undo button here. If I hold down the shift key on the keyboard while I drag that corner square, then it will keep their proportions the same so it doesn't get too skinny or too fat. Now I can drag this into place. I can use the arrow keys to move it around, or I can use the align tool to get it centered, however you prefer. And once you have it positioned the way you want and sized the way you want, I also want to change the height. Otherwise, again, you won't be able to close your book. So click on that center square and change the height to one millimeter. Now I'm going to move my text down. Sometimes it helps if I click it from the side. So I'm going to move the text down so that I can add another star to the top here. So I'm going to select the star. I want the next star to be exactly the same. So I'm going to click this button here. So make sure I have my shape selected. And then I'm going to click on the duplicate tool, which looks like three squares stacked on top of one another. Now, once I click this button, it's going to appear that nothing happens because the second star is right on top of the first one. So don't just keep hitting that button and get 45 stars. Okay. So the second one is there. It's just right on top of the first one. So once you've clicked that button one time, you can then use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move that into place. You could also drag it if you prefer but then I have my second star into place. Now I want to view it from the top. Sometimes that can help to make sure everything is lined up nicely. Also a good idea to view it from the side to make sure everything is connected and not sticking up too high. And now I want to maybe change the colors. Now, obviously the colors are on the screen aren't going to tell your printer what color to print it in order to tell it what color to print it. It's going to depend on what color filament you stick in the printer, but having the right colors on the screen can help you visualize your project a little better. So I'm going to make that blue and then I'll make all of the other pieces white. So you do want to use a single color for everything that's on top because of the way we're going to print this. It will have a background and then it will have whatever's on top. So you have two different colors for the back, one for the background and one for whatever's on top. Now I'm going to change my work plane back to normal because that yellow kind of throws the colors off. So I'm going to click on the work plane tool and then click anywhere here on the background so that I can see my project. Now, once you are satisfied with your project, don't have anything else you want to change. 
You want to check one more time, make sure that your title is correct and a name you will recognize and you want to click on the export tool. So we're getting this ready to print. So the first thing we have to do is export it from Tinkercad into an STL file. So I'm going to see here the option .stl, click that to save that project as an STL file. It'll ask you what you want to save it as. Make sure it's that name. And now you're ready to go to your slicing program where you'll get this bookmark ready to, uh, for the printer. So I have opened up my slicing program here. This is Prusa Slicer. It's the slicing program that I'll be using, but you may use a different program. Your buttons will be in a little bit different places, but the process would be similar. So the first thing I want to do is check that I have the correct printer selected. So make sure that whatever printer you're using is the printer that you have selected here. Now check your filament. I will be using PLA. That is the most common, but if you're using something different, be sure and change that. And print settings. This is the height, the layer height, how high each layer will be that it's printed. And 0.2, which is normal, will be a good setting for the bookmark. Infill, anything between 15 and 20% will be fine. Doesn't matter too much because the bookmark's pretty thin. So once I have the settings correct, I'm going to go over here to the add button. You may also find that it's called import. Click on that button. Then you want to select the file that you just saved. I have a lot of things on my computer right now, but there it is right there, my bookmark. Click on open. And now you will see your bookmark on the plate. I'm going to click here on the button that says slice now. And now the slicing program has broken this project into different layers. Now I do want to change the filament color for that design. So I'm going to come to this slider here and I'm going to slide it down till I get to that first layer where I can completely see the design, which should be at layer height 1.2, so 1.2 millimeters. Next to that is a plus button. I'm going to click on that plus button. Now what that does is tells the printer to stop right there. And so while it's printing, it's going to stop. When it gets to that layer, it's going to start beeping. And that's going to allow me to change the filament to whatever color I want to use for the design. And then it'll finish printing with that color. So once you've inserted that stop, You'll need to click slice now one more time. Now you want to go get your SD card. If your printer uses one or USB drive, you can also, if you have a Wi-Fi printer, you can send it Wi-Fi, but you want to get this project to your printer. So let me go get my SD card. And once you insert that SD card into your computer, you'll see this icon down here at the bottom that says export to SD card. Click that icon. Make sure you recognize the title that you have. You can change it here if you wish. And then click on save and that will save that project onto the SD card. Once it's saved, you can click this button here, which is your eject button and then the X button. Now you can take your SD card out of your computer, take it to your printer and begin your print. Now again, once it gets done with that background, it's gonna stop and beep, change the filament color to whatever color you want to use, and then finish your project. Once it's complete, you can find a tassel, insert it into that hole, and your bookmark will be complete.